bad situation. Um, <clears throat> but quite a bit happened here. Um, and I'll, I'll just open it up for discussion, but I'll just kind of hit some of the highlights to kind of refresh our memories. But um, if you have comments on any of these highlights or anything else, feel free to, to voice that. But we had Mary um, being brought back to Jesus uh, by the influence of Peter and especially Matthew. John the Baptist has been imprisoned, and this is really distressing to Andrew, who had been a follower of John the Baptist, and Philip. Um, and then they run out of food, which sets the context for an event from the Gospels where uh, Jesus first heals a man on the Sabbath, and then those, th these miracles are back-to-back -back in at least one of the Gospels, maybe, maybe a, more than one. Um, he heals a man with a withered hand, and then they're plucking grain on the Sabbath, and it creates a Sabbath controversy. Um, so those are some of the main, main highlights. In, any reflections or thoughts on anything that was said or that we, that we watched um, that you'd like to share? Kelsey. Just a line that stuck out to me um, when James and John were talking, and you know James was saying he didn't um, really understand everything. In fact, he just really didn't understand much of anything that was going on. And John just yeah. says, "Well, you know, we're just we're following, and we may yeah. not understand for a long time, but we're just following." And I thought that was just really impactful because I feel like that sometimes what we are doing, we don't understand why things happen, or we don't understand every single detail, but he doesn't ask much of us. He's done it all already, and he's just asking us to follow him, and I thought that was yeah. just really um, profound. And, um, of course, the moment with Mary and Jesus. Oh, what a, I just long for that to be. And, and it's so funny because I'm like, I wish he would do that for me, but he did, and he does every single day do that for us when we come to him and confess and he forgives us time after time and he's just that idea that like did you expect to be perfect you know did you expect you would never sin again because I didn't expect that but you've already given me your heart and that was just it's like that's what we want to hear you know we, we we try to pay him back we try to live up to him but we fail and we feel like such failures you know but we just want to hear him say that and just that was just so beautiful um and then one last thing I don't know how Jesus doesn't punch all these people in the face because they are so annoying. Like the Pharisees are just the worst. And he's so patient and calm and just speaks with such wisdom. And it's just such an example because we don't do that. We, we react, you know, we get frustrated if something's unjust or, and that was so unjust, you know, that he tries to heal this guy and it's just, Oh, goodness. So I just am always so impressed by his example and want to be more like him. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Yeah. On, a, on the Sabbath day, yeah. it's amazing that only the Levitical priesthood was able to go into the... On what Kelsey said, and then one on what you said, with uh, with the scene where Mary comes back and Jesus expresses forgiveness. There's a, a I imagine. I mean, we're all probably rather conscientious in our faith. I mean, you're here tonight. You didn't have to be. Um, and when we're really conscientious and really strive to do what's right, when we step out of line, as we inevitably do, um, it can be hard for us to appreciate the real power of grace and forgiveness because when we're so conscientious, it's easy to e even like almost subconsciously think that we've maybe earned something um, and to realize again, we are totally dependent on his grace and goodness. Um, 
that's a humbling and powerful thing. And Mary is a good reminder of that for us. Uh, what you were saying, Bob, about Jesus healing on the Sabbath, I thought it was interesting that the show brought out a couple of different ways to, to approach this, and they're, they're rooted in Scripture I think, very clearly. Uh, one, the, the, when they're challenging Jesus with the grain, they talk about only a priest can you know, do X, Y, and Z. And uh, Jesus, as Hebrews will talk about, is a priest of a whole different kind. Um, uh, talks about you know priest death according to the order of Melchizedek and things like that. Um, but then also Jesus explicitly says the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, uh, and He sets the, the Sabbath on, on the right principle. It is it is made for for man, not man for the Sabbath. And as the Son of Man, He has the authority to His interpretation of the Sabbath is going to be the authoritative one. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts or reflections on anything? Yeah. Yeah. That that was another angle. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to mention that one, but that that's a third dimension of this is that um, Jesus is God, and that's something that he hasn't even really disclosed to his disciples yet. But of course, we know. Nathaniel. First, with Jesus stirring the water, uh, you're right. We see so many dimensions of Je something. I appreciate about the show is we see so many dimensions of Jesus, and Jesus is has many sides to him that we see even in the Gospels. He is he is capable of being deeply compassionate and gentle. Even when Mary came back, he, you may have noticed he had been crying because John the Baptist was arrested. Uh, so there is this side to him, but at the same time. When Jesus does what he does, healing on the Sabbath and things, he has to know. I mean, anyone who's grown up as a Jew would have to know the significance of what they're doing. So he has to know he's starting controversy. Uh, and that's another dimension to him. And he's, he's working to create a response. The, the Son of Man has come, and there needs to be a response. And some will respond positively, and some will not. You know, But his actions will be the same regardless. And, and we certainly have been seeing that happen. Um, the legalism thing. I'm glad you worded it especially the way that you did. Um, sometimes we give the law of Moses a really bad rap because we think it's just inherently legalistic. But the whole way the system works actually is God approached them and offered a covenant after he saved them from Egypt and they agreed. It, it's actually quite grace-based, but it can easily be distorted into, into legalism. And certainly Christianity is prone to the exact same thing. We, God approached us through sending his son and redeemed us by grace and we accept it but we can easily transform it into something it's not it's not meant to be uh, and that's something for us to be mindful of yeah bob yes one more thing i know time's getting away from us 
But sometimes I think that God is doing this for a reason. You know, like he came to my spirit of water. And I think he's still scared of water today. Mm. So let people know he is God. Yeah. Certainly. And and I would say, um, with with what you were saying, if you didn't hear Bob, you saying sometimes God may still stir the water today. Uh, if we seriously take his example and seriously take the message of Scripture seriously, it, it's kind of impossible for us to go through life without stirring water some. I, I'm not saying we should just, you know, seek it out combatively, but a faithful Christian following in Jesus' steps will stir the water. As the New Testament amply attests, I mean, all throughout the New Testament, there's warnings about how people will respond when they see people following Christ. Um, yeah, that's a great observation, Bob. Go ahead, Barbara. That just reminded me of um, some verses that I just read about how Jesus said something to the effect of the mother will be against daughter and the father will be against son. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of stirring up and, and controversy when Christianity hits a person who doesn't understand it or at least yeah. it, when it enters into a family or Yeah, yeah. Barbara was was referencing Jesus talking about how mother will, you know, sons will be pitted against their parents and brother will be pitted against brother and stuff. Um, and we are seeing some of that in, in Jesus now as he is engaging in his ministry. He's provoking a response, and people are dividing on how they how they feel about it, how they respond to it. Well, it's a little bit after 8, um, so maybe we should go ahead and, and be finished. Um, ignore what I said earlier about how close we are to the end of this. That, that was when I was one episode ahead. We have next week, the week after, um, and then a, a special episode not related to Season 2. So we actually have three more weeks of this, not two. Um, but let's go ahead and bow, and, and we'll be dismissed. Father God, thank you for bringing us uh, together tonight. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, for his teachings, for his example. Father, we are so thankful that um, when we do stumble, and we inevitably do, when we stumble and sin, uh, that you seek us out and that you invite us back and that you forgive us graciously. Help us to remember that. Help us to rejoice in that. May that humble us and may it inspire us. May it move us to show the same kind of grace uh, to others as well in our lives. Father, continue to bless us as we seek to follow your son. We know that sometimes that means doing and saying things that are unpopular. Uh, we know sometimes that might mean stirring the water, so to speak. Uh, we pray that you will help us to do it with a, a spirit that reflects um, the, the motivations and compassion of Jesus and do it in a way that, that honors you and that is true to your will for our lives. Uh, Lord, bless us as a church to do this collectively and also individuals uh, in our daily walks. We love you so much, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen.